Like, I didn't expect any of this in... I, I, I thought Philippines was nothing like this, I'll be honest. <laughs> yes, I am wearing a stupid hat, and I am wearing a jacket inside, but it's cold. And I did record a different video before this in a different hat, I just wanted to mix it up. And also, I've moved chairs because my back are in that other chair. And this is like an old recliner chair, so we're going to do it on this. So, top 10 places in the Philippines. This is something I wish I could do. I have no, I, I'll be honest, I have no idea what it looks like in the Philippines. The only, other than when we're watching shows, but the only time I've ever seen any shots of the Philippines is a wrestler called Batista, my favourite wrestler ever. He's, I think he's half Filipino, and he did a little travel back to the Philippines. And I saw him driving around for maybe 10 seconds, and that's the only shot I've ever had of the Philippines, but... Already from this, yeah, from this, from this screenshot here. I'm not even recording, I'm Adam. <laughs> Already from this screenshot right here. I, uh, it just looks amazing. Blue water and everything, I'd have no idea. I'd love to do something like this, but I can't, we, I can't afford it. I, imagine, it'd be great if me and Ben could do a video going to Philippines and record it all, but sometimes we work five, six days a week as a job, and we don't, we, we do not earn any money on YouTube, honestly, we don't. But if we did, if we did and we could do like travel vlogs or we'd go straight somewhere, well, who knows, I need to see it first, but it looks amazing so far. I have no idea what it's like. Top 10 from a from a channel, a channel called Lost LeBlanc. I don't know if he does travel stuff or what, but that that would just be the best way to do a channel. If we, say if we could just like travel somewhere like Philippines and record it for you, that'd be the best. You know what, let's get, a, let's get the Patreon going and let's get like one dollar a month and we might go in about 50 years. But other than that, let's check it out. If you haven't followed us, Instagram's there, blah, 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 everything's down below. Please follow my channel that's in the description. I'm gonna bring out a lot of stuff soon. Not reactions, just like personal things, little little fun things, uh, but please check it out. And obviously Philippines have been a big part of our YouTube story so far. The singers, the people, people, so many, so many of your followers, I think you're, you are our main following, Instagram, everything, people who have followed me on my account and the YouTube account. So let's go, let's see what it's, I wanna see what it's like in the Philippines. So you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna to go to the top 10 places in the Philippines. Now I'm about to let you in on a little secret here. The hidden gem of Southeast Asia is right here, the Philippines. My favorite of all countries that I've traveled to, it is some of the most beautiful landscapes and the most incredible people you will ever come across. Do any of you live in a place that looks like this? So you're not, if you're now from before the you start taking advice from a random stranger, I want to give you a bit of my background. My name is Christian LeBlanc and I've spent the last two years traveling Southeast Asia. And with that, I've spent about three months of it in the Philippines. It's a country I plan to revisit very soon. Let's get started with a countdown. Okay, so Number 10 is Boracay. Boracay is easily one of the most popular islands in all of the Philippines, and with that, it can get pretty busy sometimes. Now, that can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing. The great thing is, you can guarantee you can find some extremely beautiful hotels if that's in your budget. You can also find some relatively discount ones too, so budget shouldn't be too much of an issue here. The nightlife is pretty good and- Yeah, are any of you from there, and what is it like money-wise in, in Philippines? You know, like, anyone who knows, like, currency, if I took if I took a hundred pounds, what could I get with a, how like how much would a meal cost? Say if I went on a night like this, on a night out and got drinks and a meal, how much would it cost? And the food selection is great. Borca has everything from low-end hostels all the way up to extreme luxury hotels. It can be backpacked, but definitely expect to spend a bit more money here. The island of Boracay itself is extremely beautiful. Some of the bluest waters you'll see, and some of the finest white sand beaches. I, thought I would assume say, this is how it got so popular. I thought I was say the population find of the island has outgrown the infrastructure at least 10 times over, and this can lead to a lot of congestion. But you're going to spend most of your time on the beach anyway, so what does that matter? Sounds like Number a busy nine, place. Oslob. Oslob is extremely nice. well known for one thing, and that is the whale sharks. This is a place where you can actually go and swim right next to these gentle beasts. Now there is a little bit of controversy that surrounds this because the whale sharks are fed, but I'll leave that up to your discretion. It's such a humbling experience swimming next to an animal that dangerous. can literally grow as large as a small bus. In record they grow up to 40 feet, although it's very unlikely you'll see one this large. 
Only 30 minutes away, there's a couple sets of waterfalls. Tumalog is the most impressive of the two. I'd love it's to do this. It's a massive drop-off that creates a beautiful mist. Now, if you're looking for more of an experience with the waterfalls, check out a Guinea waterfalls, because you can actually scale up them, you can jump off of them. Hi right, Ben, if you're watching this, imagine us doing this. Look how good this place looks. And people might even spot us, who knows? <laughs> but, uh, just a lot of it looks like wildlife and nature, so... Is there any like, you know, like in Australia, there's a lot of spiders. What is it like for creepy crawlies? It's much more interactive than just looking at a waterfall like you do at Tumalog. It's definitely worth a visit. Number eight on my list is Malapasqua. It's very unlikely that you've heard of this place before, but there's a great reason to go, and it's this one animal that lives below the sea. It's very unlikely you've ever heard of this place, but Malapasqua is home to one of the most beautiful creatures I've ever seen. Not Dory! A pressure shark. If you're a scuba diver, this is a must. There is no fish more impressive than the thresher shark. It has a long oh. tail just like a scythe. You see it beautifully cutting through the water. For me, this made going to Malapasqua 100% worth it. Now, and the dive scene is incredible, but it's not the only thing. Malapasqua Island itself is extraordinarily beautiful. Again, if you haven't already noticed the trend, extremely blue water, How are they fine so blue? white sand beaches, and relatively expensive accommodations, so this definitely has to be something that you save up for. It's a very small island, and all the accommodations on the island are quite expensive. Do a little research. We even managed to find a bit of nightlife on this incredibly dormant island. My girlfriend Laura really hit it off with the locals. <laughs> if you know anything about the Philippines, you'll probably- Before we go, I'd love to- I'd love to- That is something I'd love doing. In the last couple of years of my life, I've kind of come out my shell a bit more and met more people and enjoyed- enjoy talking to more people and just like I went to a festival by myself for the first time two years ago a rock festival and met some people that I'll always know for the rest of my life probably now and so many different walks of life of people were there you know I just, I, I'd love to go somewhere like this and just meet people and talk about any anything or anything we even know about the Philippines so far do you know what I mean Probably be shocked that I put El Nido in seventh place. When we El have Nido the money. is easily one of the most beautiful places in the Philippines and arguably the world. The beauty of this place leaves you in awe. Now let's start with the great things about this place. The Four Island Tour is incredible because it lets you see the cerulean blue waters, the jagged cliff sides. It's seriously earth porn. It's nothing like you've ever seen before. The days in El Nido are unforgettable because you'll spend your entire day hanging around these beautiful landscapes. But this is where the problems start. When night hits, it becomes a bit less <laughs> enjoyable, I'd say. El Nido's electrical grid is archaic at best. When we backpacked, we spent at least half of our nights in darkness. And worse than the dark, we spent it without any fan or air conditioning. It gets extremely hot in the Philippines, and when the power goes out, I become a pretty unhappy camper. In addition to this, if you're planning to do anything like I do as a YouTuber, Uploading is basically a no-go. The internet speeds are so slow and it will drive you mad. Sounds like now there house. are some ways you can get around these inconveniences. If you spend a lot more money, you can actually stay at accommodations that will have backup generators and this will at least help take care it of the problem of the girlfriend's bum, doesn't it? So you won't sweat to death at night. I want to end this on a positive note because despite all the inconveniences of El Nido, the beauty of this place makes it all worth it. So you have to go check it out. If you end up going, make sure you do the Four Island Tour and make sure you climb Tara Cliff if you're willing to risk your life. It's extremely jagged, I don't but the like view heights. you get is unforgettable. But it could be the worth next it. on my list is Bohol. If anyone saw me daydreaming through that last bit, I was actually thinking about us going to the Philippines and like us filming it. If we could, like how 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 we'd do it. But that, that if you saw my face go blank, that's what I was thinking about. Bohol is a large and magical island. There's so many things to see and do here. It never hurts to go around with locals. That's Panic about jumping in those cool holes. You never know what's like going to be in a hole. hole in the ground. No pun intended. With Bohol being a big island, you could easily spend five to ten days here. The most popular of the beaches is Alona Beach. And this is a place where you can stay at a five-star hotel or at a guest house or a hostel. How do you get the that time of work, man? on the expensive end, but nothing unreasonable. Also a must in Bohol is to rent a scooter. Some of the most incredible riding I've ever done has been done here on this island. You take the scooter, you drive up further north from Alona Beach, and you'll end up visiting these guys. These are Tarsiers. Animals only found in Bohol. They basically sit like this all day, but what more could you ask for? I mean, just look at him. He's chilling. 
Mondays, am I right? Also, we're- Like, imagine seeing an animal like that, it only exists in one place, how rare it is, it's like a life experience. I know you can see it on a screen, but it, it makes no- When you see something up close, or in the wild, like, I freak out if I see a fox in England. Something about foxes that I really like, it's just so rare to see an animal in the nature, you know what I mean? Worth mentioning, I did go up further north to Anda Beach, and although I liked Anda, I didn't love it. I found it a bit of a dirty beach. For me, I would have preferred to have stayed in Alona Beach, dirty, rented a scooter, leaves. and used it to do day trips like seeing the Tarsiers, the Chocolate Hills, etc. You'll also see a lot of European-inspired churches while exploring the Philippines. This one here was built by the Spanish, and it was actually shook up during an earthquake a few years ago. Just after visiting the Tarsiers, you're gonna see the man-made forest. And true to its name, it's a forest that was actually hand-planted by men. It's a really awesome feeling because as you drive down this narrow road, you feel like you're going through a tree tunnel. It's great for Instagram goals, and it's definitely an awesome feeling as you're riding on your scooter. Oh, another, after up. the man-made forest, about another... Oh, it's Grass Tyson, I love this guy, I love that guy, but I'm sorry, not today. Another 35, 45 minutes up north, you'll be going through what some people deem the main attraction of Bohol. These are the Chocolate Hills, and you'll notice they look extremely similar to a Hershey Kiss. I don't know if that's why they've been called that, but the name is definitely fitting. Much you can drive up to the set. top of one of the hills and actually get a pretty good vista of the entire Sunrise. mountain range. I definitely recommend it. Sunrise is underrated. Place that's on very few people's lists. Dumaguete is an incredible place, and there's a lot to see and do here. It's a place I spent almost two weeks scuba diving and exploring its beautiful nature. If you go to Dumaguete, check out Casaroro Falls. How are you getting this much time off work, man? Two weeks. Down below. Right across from Dumaguete is a short boat ride to Apo Island. Make sure you check out this place. Apo Island translates into English as Turtle Island. And it's well named because everywhere you go is serious dirt, bro. There's sea turtles everywhere. And these chillers are used to having people around so they don't mind when you swim up next to them. Just make sure not to touch them. This is by no means Indu Magetti. Imagine meeting a sea turtle. Yeah, meeting. I know I said meeting. You like meeting. It's just, you, you could probably travel the Philippines and you've done your life's travel. There's so many things there, so many different parts. Only things you'd see in that country. Like, I didn't expect any of this in Phil I, I I thought Philippines was nothing like this, I'll be honest. Like, with what I've seen before, I thought it was not like this at all. But this is one of the must, must, must do's of the Philippines. This here is Manjuyod Sandbar. I call this place the Maldives of the Philippines. It's about a two to three hour drive yeah. to get here from Dumaguete, but every single minute of the ride is worth it. Once you arrive, you arrive at a little dock, you take a boat across about 45 minutes, and you arrive in paradise. If you have that extra time, or you want to take your Instagram to a whole nother level, you better check out Manjuyod Sandbar. Those are just a few of the things you can do in Dumaguete. There's some nightlife, there's great restaurants, and a whole lot of nice hotels and resorts. This is a place for anyone on any budget. Number four, almost sure. on the podium, but not quite, Kawasan Falls, also known as Badian Canyoneering. Now, before I even get into this, if you're not too afraid of heights and you're not afraid to get wet, this is one of the coolest things that you can do in the Philippines. It's a full day trip where you're guided through these very narrow crevasses where the water flows down creating these awesome little waterfalls. It's such a unique and amazing experience that you really can't find that many places in the world. I brought my expensive slow motion camera and a lousy waterproof housing. I risked it for you guys. You're welcome. Body on Canyoneering is a guided expedition and you cannot do this alone. By law you need to have a guide and I highly recommend it anyways, you would not want to do this alone. It's not to, too why? expensive. From my memory, it's about 30 US dollars, you get a guide and he shows you through the canyons, he pushes you off the cliffs and you even get a meal out of it, so it's not too bad. At the end of the canyon For is the world dollar? renowned Kawasan Fall. This waterfall literally looks like the exit to the Gatorade factory. The water is this weird fluorescent blue that looks like it should be bottled and sold to people at a very high price. The water is quite cold, so it's a very nice refreshing break after a long day of jumping through canyons. Oh, did now you I drink must it? mention that when this was filmed, I was actually one of the last groups to have gone through the Badion Canyon in quite some time, and I'm not even sure if they've reopened. The municipal government shut it down because they were worried about erosion, so do a little research, hopefully it's reopened because it is one of the top things to do in the Philippines. 
Also, a random insert, you'll see roosters everywhere in the Philippines. Cockfighting is basically a national sport. I named him Fred. The bronze medal goes to my favorite landscape in the entire world. This beach is seriously heaven, and I don't use that word lightly. It is my favorite. And I'm honestly blown away that to this day, Nakpan has not been developed as a resort town. This is the most incredible landscape that I've ever seen. Now if you remember we talked about El Nido being in 7th or 6th place, well Nakpan is about a 45 minute scooter ride away from El Nido. So again, if you are on the edge of going to El Nido, consider this. You will get Nakpan and El Nido together because they're... So you might as well just go here. Like, how, if, if I rented a scooter, how much would the scooter be? Pretty much. How much would it cost? My neighbor is outside in his car looking in the window staring at me right now. I have no idea why. Only a scooter ride away from each other. The problem with not so I'm moving this, this way a bit so you can't see because me. it's such a beautifully untouched landscape. There's nothing no on it. There's really only a couple guest houses with which they have no electricity after a certain hour. I think it's after 6 p.m. You have two options. You can either rough the heat and stay in a very basic guest house on one of the most beautiful beaches in the entire world, or you can just rent a scooter from El Nido and drive back to your hotel, resort, wherever you're staying in El Nido. But one of the most epic day trips. How do you get there? Do. No, I, I mean it's, it's an island. What you about scooter? This island here is my silver medal. It's probably my favorite island in the entire world and it's easily the best island in the Philippines. It is the definition of exploring, getting lost, and seeing things that few others have ever seen before. Bonteon Island is basically like Boracay before Boracay blew up. It has the beauty that will one day become a developed area, but for right now, this is a place that you can experience to yourself. There's so much to do here, from exploring the jungle to exploring the beautiful beach that surrounds the entire island. There's even goats that freely roam. Do people live a lot? Oh, Definitely check out the mangroves. There are these little trees that grow on the water. Go explore the other side of the island where there's literally no identifiable landmarks. It just looks beautiful, so wet. untouched nature and so many kids just playing on the side of the road. Definitely say hi to them. They really appreciate it and they're a lot of fun to hang out with. I How think nice is everybody in, in these, it was definitely one of the all highlights over the Philippines? Of my day. It wouldn't be a perfect island experience without a perfect sunset, and Bantian certainly has a lot of them. In fact, the Philippines has plenty of them. I don't think I've seen more beautiful sunsets in my entire life. You really start to take them for granted because every single night you get a sunset that could easily be one of the most beautiful you've ever seen. Now, I don't want to call it the winner because everyone's a winner, guys. But just kidding, this is the winner of my top 10 of the Philippines. Korun. Korun is definitely not Korun. the easiest of places to get to. It's pretty far north. In fact, it's even farther north than El Nido. It's more inaccessible than El Nido. And it can definitely be a bit of an expensive place to visit because it's so inaccessible. You either take like a five- Imagine just getting lost there, you know, like by yourself, you know, just... Neighbor staring at me again. Imagine just going away. Imagine if you didn't have to worry about like money or anything. Oh, oh, Ben, if we could just do a travel vlog and get paid for it, my word. If we could just chill out here, meet people, and take videos, that is, that is the dream. You could just get lost here. Five hour ferry from El Nido, or you can fly directly from Manila. Definitely expect to pay top dollar, because the flights are cheap. This is not a cheap place to go. Now it's time to show you why you're willing to spend your money to come here, and why you're willing to deal with the inconvenience of getting here. Koran is simply out of this world. I can't compare it to anything, to be honest. It's like New Zealand and Africa had a baby, and it was beautiful. As always, my favorite thing to do is rent a scooter. It's the first thing I do whenever I get to a new place. Get a scooter, go explore this island. You will be blown away. Now, I must say that the roads we took on our scooters were basically like off-roading. There was some very loose gravel, some huge rocks that we were That'd driving be the over, best but the part. feeling look of exploring where few have explored before was so worth it. Similar to Bohol, they have mountains that look like the Hershey Kisses. They're not called the Chocolate Hills, but they're very similar looking. When we drove down this road, we probably didn't see tourists for the entire day. This might sound scary to some of you, but it's one of the most amazing things. The Just local like people freedom. are some of the friendliest and most accommodating people. Definitely don't take that as a bad thing. It's an incredible feeling of truly getting lost in a place that you've never been before. You didn't now, I'm that exploring one. the rural side of Karun for the day. Right, we're off. we're off again. My stupid camera only films for 20 minutes, so I just filmed the entire video, kept talking for ages at the end, and just realised it's not even filming. Right, so let's carry on from here. 
Exploring the rural side of Peron for the day, we went to the more touristy spots. There's these beautiful hot springs where people generally come for sunset. If you come here around 5 p.m., you can definitely expect to see tons of other travelers. It's a really cool way to meet people. The next look, day, that's my girlfriend what I want, and I to and a couple of friends rented kayaks, and we went and kayaked all the way across to a set of islands. Now, I don't know if I recommend the kayaking because it truly was a very, 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 very difficult workout, but it's good to stay in shape while traveling, so maybe this is the best option for you. There's also the option to do island tours, similar to an El Nido, so maybe check that out if you don't want to go through excruciating heat in a kayak. But when we made it to the other Please side, cream the on work that. was so worth it. Similar to the landscapes of El Nido, you have the jagged cliff sides, the incredibly blue water, and the feeling of being cut off from the rest of the world. It's extremely- That's what you want, just to get away and feel like you're on your own in the perfect place. Not on your own, but you know, like, all the stresses you have in the world about stuff, money, it, you could just get away for some time. I, it, I'd love to do this. I'd love as YouTube to take off and this, be able to do this. So imagine just being able to come over and meet you guys. Anyone who's still watching at this point in the video, thank you. We've gone on for a while now, but if you imagine we could just come over and meet you guys, do some videos, do some vlogs, if anyone would want to meet us energizing to do that every now and then. These are among some of my favorite drone shots I've ever captured. Thank you, Korun. This is Laura looking graceful, but then she got bit by a fish. At the end of the day, we put up the white flag and we water. paid someone to tow our kayaks back behind their motorboat. It was the best decision we ever made. If you like this video and want to see more like this, check out the video's link below. I have top It'd literally be the dream to do. I had no idea Philippines was like that either. Maybe these are, they will all seem like islands off of the Philippines. So how far away are they from the center? From like the, the city centers? And um, what are you city, where, where do any of you live near here? Or is everybody in the city center? Where are you all from if you're watching? Uh, give me some, why don't you do some videos of where you live and just we could watch them? Do you know what I mean? Like, follow us videos where we are. If you're watching us, where you're watching us from. Uh, and if you've ever been to these places, which I'd like to go, then I say we set up a Patreon now. Anyone who, who donates from the Philippines, we go meet them when we're over there for funding it. And that's my idea. See? Imagine that. Okay, but right, stay safe, let me know how you're doing, and give me some more to watch. But ciao, ciao. I gotta get up off this chair, do the camera thing, so give me a second. Boom.